Basically, the UNFCCC, the convention, is provided with several subsidiary bodies that are supposed to help uh, the parties to uh, implement the convention. So you have two types of subsidiary bodies, the permanent ones, which are the SB SBI, Subsidiary Body for Implementation, and the SBSTA, the Subsidiary Bodies for Scientific and Technical Advice. These are permanent, and so the SBI aims to um, provide guidance and, uh, and, and support toward the implementation of the Convention and its protocol, so the Kyoto Protocol and now also the Paris Agreement. And the SVSTA, so as its name uh, say, says it, it uh, provides uh, scientific and uh, technical guidance and uh, support um, to uh, implement properly the, the Convention and its uh, uh, protocols. Uh, the other type of uh, subsidiary body that can exist are, as they called, ad hoc, ad hoc, um, ad hoc subsidiary bodies. So there used to be one that uh, was particularly active last year. It's, it had an awful name. It was the Durban Ad Hoc Platform for Enhanced Action. So it was created in, in COP19, uh, I think, in Durban, and its mandate was to uh, be able to deliver an uh, an agreement or any other protocol or legal uh, legal tool uh, that could be applicable to all parties uh, by tw by 2015, and so that it could, it could enter in force by 2020. And so it actually delivered its mandate in COP21, as you all know. So uh, now one now its mandate is delivered. It was then dissolved, and so basically it worked um, it worked a lot in before COP20 COP21. To prepare like the actual draft of the of the text, but now ADP is over. There is a new uh, ad hoc subsidiary body whose name is the APA, which is the working group for part of the Paris Agreement, the ad hoc, ad hoc working group for Paris Agreement. So its uh, its purpose is to prepare the entry to force of the Paris Agreement and its impl implementation. Um, so basically, what happened in Bonn? was the meeting of the three subsidiary bodies, so the two permanent ones, SBI, SBSTA, and the first ever meeting of the APA. This was a very important meeting for the APA. So what was the agenda of the different uh, subsidiary bodies? So the SBSTA dealt with uh, several topics, in particular, uh, how to account for financial, financial resources. This was a very tricky point as uh, the the goal of 100 billion per year toward the developing countries is still to be met and the way of accounting for these resources are like because there have to be additional uh, to have to be additional finance so how to account for these actual flows of money is very controversial so this has been dealt with in for the first week another topic that has, that has been discussed in the SBSTA is how the IPCC can provide input during the first global subtake so the, glo the global stock take is, um, as you know, in the Paris Agreement, every five years the, the, con the conditional contributions are reviewed. And so the global stock, stock takes aims to see how far are we from the ob objective set by the Paris Agreement, which is two degrees or, if possible, the 1.5 degrees. And so, yeah, all the discussions were how the IPCC can help uh, the international C in this process. And then other uh, more technical topics were discussed, such as agriculture and also land use, in particular in relation with the CDM. Now for uh, SBI. Um, so SBI talked about the modalities of the NDCs registry, because sometimes it's, a very, old, it's, a, it's very hard for developing countries to be able to prepare their INDCs and their future NDCs, and they really lack capacities in this. So how can uh, how are they supposed to 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 prepare this and also um, the SBI talked about the support to the Paris Committee for capacity building which is quite related to the one, the one I took before so this committee it aims to build capacities in countries that need the, 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 that need so to enforce the the dispositions related to the Paris agreement in particular their national policies and also, this uh, year um, in SBI was very special for Yungo, the youth constituency, because uh, the, the midterm revision of the DOA work program was uh, undertaken. 
the Doha Work Program aims to uh, imp implement the Article 6 of the Convention that deals with public participation, education to climate change, public access to information, and other things that I forgot. But so it's it's a thing that is very important for the young girl. So it uh, it has been discussed and there has been a workshop for the national focal points that are supposed to deal with it, and uh, it has been renamed ACE uh, Action for Climate Empowerment because there was a. Uh, it wasn't clear whether we were talking about the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement or of the Convention. So now you did change the name, there is no confusion possible. Okay. Lastly, so the APA, uh, the, uh, the agenda was very hard to, to set. Uh, it, was, uh, it has been negotiated a lot during all the, all the first week almost. And so in the end, uh, the APA had a little bit more than one week over the two to discuss about the features of the NDCs. Uh, meaning how the countries should uh, set their targets in, the, in their national contributions, what metrics should they use, what should, what should it include, how to account for um, mitigation and uh, adaptation and stuff like this. So uh, that was very controversial. Uh, they also uh, talked about transparency, because under the Paris Agreement there is a new framework for transparency and in particular uh, th during the session took place the first ever facilitative sharing of views, meaning that uh, I think it's 15 countries uh, presented their biennial reports showing what they're doing to fight climate change. And this is a part of the transparency framework uh, of the Paris Agreement. Uh, lastly, they talked about compliance, which is very tricky, qu tricky question because the entire purpose of the Paris Agreement is to be is not to be uh, not binding because it's binding, but uh, the, there is no sanctions if you don't respect it. So how are you? The, the compliance part of the agreement is a bit hard to implement. So how should we take into account and what dispositions uh, should we bring to the agreement uh, in this topic? I think that's it.